Hello, and welcome back to the Flix Forum podcast with Jesse and MJ. Each week we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. This week we are checking out Netflix's 47th film, the 2017 comedy Hashtag Reality High. It's directed by Fernando Labria and it stars Nesta Cooper and Keith Powers. Hello, MJ. Hey, mate. You just named two there. Only two. Only two. There's That's... a big cast in this. Oh, sorry. A big cast in terms of quantity in this one. There is. I thought you were just going to take your own liberties and re- name them all. I thought the, the shorter the cast <laughs> was, the, 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 the shorter the amount of time we have to spend on this one. Um, We're flying without heater again today. We are. Busy man can't put reality high as a priority in his life right now, which is his loss. Uh, Maybe. We'll get to to that. Actually, we'll get to that very soon as to whether it's his loss for not watching this or not. It's it's been tough for us to um, not be, uh, to be unbiased so far. So far, we haven't even spoken about the film yet. This is the first one we've ever watched that's got a hashtag in the title. Correct. (laughs) That is a good pick up. Let's add that to our Forum uh, facts. It might not be the last though. So yeah, I, I, this will probably be the last time we'll shout out to Heater and we'll let you know when he's back um, yeah, from now on. Absolutely. But we do kick off our show with our fast flicks where we do a quick summary of the film. So MJ, what are your thoughts on hashtag reality hashtag high? Hashtag reality high is a snapshot into the world of a high school senior who is dealing with popularity, love, education and family as she navigates her way through the last few months of schooling. You've made that sound like a nice little movie. I think it, it kind of very broadly summarises what happens in Good. the film. I've um, gone with a girl goes from being a loser to being cool and hurts people along the way before turning it around. See, that fast flicks. <laughs> and that's absolutely what happens in the film. Yeah. How often has that been done? It just sounds like <laughs> any teen, <laughs> teen comedy in a school. I know, yeah. I know. And I was thinking that when I was watching it. I'm like, oh, well, I know what the next half an hour is going to be, but... Yes, so this one was tricky to find out anything about the actual film or, or how it was made or anything. I think one thing about it is just looking at the um, the reception that it got, just a very small amount of people have seen this film. And we've obviously got an idea of how many people have watched a lot of Netflix original films. And I feel like looking specifically at IMDb and Letterboxd ratings, these are definitely on the lower scale of the quantity of people who have seen this film. Um IMDb only four and a half thousand have rated it. Letterbox just over two thousand have rated it, and they're they're really small numbers, massively small. So five point two out of ten on IMDb. Yep. Two point one out of five on Letterbox. Yep. The Rotten you... Tomatoes. I, I didn't look didn't at it. Look, so it, it doesn't have enough reviews for a critical consensus. Oh well, that just backs up what we're talking about. I only had five <laughs> reviews and only five, yeah, and it sits at forty percent on there, and the audience was. 51 on only 162, so very low. Yeah, okay. And look, that's, I mean, we try our hardest, um, listeners out there, we try our hardest to give you as much information that we can find about the film. And I kid you not, I was looking everywhere for it. There just wasn't that much info on this film. No, I mean, the other thing on, when you search for it in Google, it comes up down the side with the percentage of uh, Google users who liked this film. Oh yeah, okay. Do you want to have a guess of of what, what percentage of Google users liked this film? Let's say conservatively thirty five percent higher. Okay, ninety five percent. Oh, what? <laughs> I was no, not expecting that. I said thirty five because I thought you'd be like, no, it's like ten. No, no that, that's the yeah. point you're trying to make. No, no, ninety five percent. I was trying to make the opposite. So, <laughs> wow. Okay. They had a few little reviews down the side. No matter what browser I opened, and I couldn't click on them, but a few of the reviews had different profile photos, but they all looked very similar. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I love this movie because I love the dude. I love the dude. I love the dude. So, so I, and you know what? That is what is going to be popular about this film. And I'm going to preface, if you're listening to this podcast, there's a chance that you liked this film. Um, and before we go and go through spoilers, if you do want to watch this film, we are going to spoil it. But I, we need to say this film was not aimed at us. No. Like we, we have to be really clear that, yes, I don't know if you liked it or not yet, but if we didn't like it, we need to understand that this filmmaker was not targeting a 30-year-old man. No, and I'm like I always go into these films with an open mind and, yeah. and yes, we'll make comment about it not being targeted at us, but I still, even if I know a film's not targeted at me, I can still see some good qualities in it, I guess. Absolutely. Are, so, so, yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, the other thing that I saw, I, I always hang out for the credits and watch the credits because throughout the movie, there are a few songs that I was like, oh, that sounds sort of familiar. Okay. So, literally, so there was a lot of music in this film, as yeah. a good teen film yeah, yeah, sure. generally will. Majority of the songs, I think there was like fifteen songs, were done by this artist called Rwanga, and I've never even heard of that artist Rwanga. before. Rwanga. Okay. So, um, 
Did Good, you do yeah. some digging on Rwanga? I didn't. I was okay. like, oh, I'm not going to waste my time. Potentially uh, a DJ, maybe? Possibly. Yeah, yeah possibly. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, didn't have any cinematic release. So, straight to Netflix, the 8th of September, 2017. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's... And filmed in and around LA and Santa Clarita. Yeah, uh, very... California. Very California, California kind California, of film. Definitely. Okay, what are our early thoughts? What, what, what did you think straight out the bat? From the so, film? yeah, like straight out the bat, it felt like... It felt like a TV show on MTV. Mm-hmm. Maybe not MTV. I don't even know what... You know, one of those sort of young female kind of stations. TV show that I would never watch. That's that's kind of the first vibe that I got. I'm like... And as I'm, I'm a long way removed from this target audience. Um, like, it was dialed up. It was predictable. <laughs> and I, I can see young girls watching this and really resonating with, like, the lead character because, you know, they're not the most popular girl at school, but they want to be the most popular girl at school. And you know, the, the main heartthrob guy because they're like, oh, you know, I wish, you know, the, the popular guy at school was so down to earth like him. I, I get all those things. <laughs> um, but at, at, at times I found it really painful to watch. Yeah, so I'm going to use that straight off the bat as well. Like This reminded me of another Netflix original that we have covered a little bit earlier on this podcast, uh, XOXO. Just the, the okay. stylistic qualities of it. This the, felt younger. Despite, yeah, okay, despite yeah, the yeah, fact despite, that they were probably the, same, probably age the same age characters, age. Yeah. I think this was this felt like it was mm, like a twelve to fifteen year old female hitting zone. Yeah, I guess so. But yeah, anyway, yeah, this, like these guys are all this is their last year of school. I guess they're all trying to get out of that that school environment and look towards their. But I reckon if you are in the final year of school, you are not resonating with this because it's, it feels a bit too kiddy. I don't know. Possibly, possibly. Uh, so yeah, I I don't have much time for this film to be honest. No. Before we kick into it, I will say. I think it threw out a couple of nice messages around being yourself and not letting other people dictate who you are, but it really jammed it down your throat. Like, it wasn't subtle about it. No, like, the messages in it were the dad making a speech about the messages. And so Yeah, very... And, well, and I have to say, I think what he said and the messages were great. And I think that young girls and young guys and whatever should, should listen to that, but... There's more subtle ways to, yeah, it's very, to set it's very explicit in your face <laughs> yeah. and nice that it's done in a movie, but imagine your parents sitting down your dad and saying yeah. that to yourself, you wouldn't like it. But at least there was thought there and I don't you don't want to, you know, XOXO you can almost argue didn't make that effort. I think we spoke about when we were talking about that one, the director was all about I just want to show the DJ <laughs> scene and the dance scene and you know, I used to take drugs all the time and I came out of it all right. Like so that's that's where I'm, I'm giving it a nice little... Okay, I can see what you're doing. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> this, so the director of this film, Fernando Labria, mm. this is his third feature. Yep. Uh, his first one was called Amar Amori, which is a Spanish film. And his second one was um, Sundown. Uh, they're both heavily influenced by Mexico, I think. So, so he was is, born in Mexico. Yep. So this, is, so this film's probably sort of trying to break out to the American audience. So what? I was reading that he he went to film school in LA. Yep. And he was a TV director, producer for Fox Sports and MTV. MTV, I can really see where that <laughs> Definitely. has come through. So it it feels a little bit removed from what he was what he has been doing. But you can you can see it's a nice little uh, bit of experience that he's got before he got to this point. So yeah, um, yeah, it's interesting. Very going to be an interesting career track because yeah, I, I wonder if this is one of those films that he's like. You want me to direct it? Sweet, I'll do whatever I can to get my foot in the door. So, yeah, hopefully it hasn't been stuck in that door. <laughs> Goes no further. Uh, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's have a look at some characters. All right. Um, so Danny Barnes is our main protagonist. So yeah. She. So this is this is where it gets cliche. She's a smart girl who gets popular, and the popularity gets to her head. So then she reverts back to being herself. And this time she completely owns it and realizes that life was great as it was in the first place. And again, it's been done a thousand times. What I didn't really understand is, I don't know. I think like Danny was kind of like smart and pretty, but like bullied like she wasn't. I don't know. It just, it, she yeah. didn't feel like she was that character. <laughs> to me, that whole change from that loser to popular to something in between in a 90 minute film, it wasn't done. It was just very jarring. <laughs> it was massively jarring. It never felt real. No, it did not at all. Not and at all. it was like she was when, and this just drives me crazy, when they have that big setup where you know that she's going to get egg on her face. <laughs> you, 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 they've set her up to be smarter than that, to fall for that. And, and like, she fell for it. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> yeah. like, and I was like, no, come on. And she had the opportunity to get out of it too. Like there were, there were some sus things and even, um, you know, the cam dude that, 
she's all over. He's sort yeah. of like, oh, I don't trust her. Yeah. She's like, oh, nah, she's awesome. But she's at the front foot from the start because um, Alexa was the one that came to her saying, let's be friends. And Danny was like, oh, I don't know about this. So she had the upper hand. But she pulled out that friendship bracelet and she's like, oh, <laughs> that's amazing. That is a- well, let's talk about Alexa. Was, uh, Alexa Medina Absolute bitch Pure evil, evil. With the words that I <laughs> I was like Horrible not cool um, And I don't I don't think I can't think of any Girls in a school In real life That are that Over the top horrible Nah And I, I think it's a bit Of a whack at People that get Famous for no apparent reason And then think they're King of the world um, But She wasn't Real The problem is She had no Redeeming qualities At no, all no. She was literally In this plot in order to get her comeuppance. Yeah. Just so the audience could be like, yeah, cop that. <laughs> like, that's that's what it was. Yeah. The only little thing I can think of is at the end when she eats that donut because she's like, she does say that line about how her mum has Make, always yeah. made her do this and, you know, I wish I could just eat a donut. And then you think maybe at the end, oh, okay, is she becoming human? But no, she was shocking. She was just awful. <laughs> like, not even believable. Cam, the love interest of <clears throat> every single girl in this film. So he's he's the uh, Troy Bolton esque <laughs> superstar athlete who wants to be more than just the basketball guy or in this world the swimming guy. Um, I I didn't understand why he asked Danny out at the start. Good, I had exactly the same thoughts because I, I found him as a nothing character because I couldn't understand why all of a sudden he's like I don't want a popular girlfriend. They didn't make that clear. And obviously, when he broke up with Alexa, they didn't set him up like he was going to be jumping back out there and playing the field or he broke up with her because he wanted to get with Danny. He just broke up with her because, you know, he didn't like her and it wasn't working. Yeah. And then the next day he asked out Danny. I was like, where the hell did that come from? Like, yeah. yeah it, that, it was, that's the word that I keep coming back to is jarring. Yeah. It was very jarring. Yeah. And he was, he was just a bit dull, wasn't he? Like, yeah, there, there, like, Apart from being a good swimmer, like he just seemed like a nice guy. He, he was a nice guy. He was exactly yeah. right. He was a nice guy. He said the right things. He was good to his mates. He was he was good to Danny. Hmm. Um, he tried to do right by his dad. He stood up for himself. Yeah, but like nothing about this mate. I like I won't remember him in a week's time. No, as a character. I like talking Whereas about Troy this now. Bolton. Troy Bolton's next level. Thinking about this now, I can't even remember what he looked like. Hmm. I actually just looked at a photo of him on IMDb and he's got like this little uh, pencil mustache. And mm. I was like, that's not the guy who was in this film, but obviously he just grew up. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've, only, I've got one other character. Good. I have one more, but I, I hope for you say this guy. Freddy? Yeah, Freddy. Okay, had to, I, I couldn't stand Freddy. So we have to talk about Freddy. Though. You have to. You need to. Because I was, I was really curious to see what they were going to do with him. So I never thought that Danny and Cameron, so the two leads, I never thought that they weren't going to end up together. But I felt like they'd really set up Freddy to not give him a happy ending. Like, is he just okay being friends with Danny even though he's hopelessly in love? Like, they set up that fact that he's so in love with her. And they didn't resolve it. Not at all. Not at all. And that did my absolute head in because they made it so obvious at the start that he was so keen on her and... All of a sudden, at the end, he's over her because he's got a couple of dancers That's behind him. The, cheerle- the yeah, cheerleaders, cheerleaders are there, and it's like, oh, actually, no, no, he's going to be fine. Yeah. Freddie's going to be fine. So that's the thing. This character then, in the end, is just a secondary character that only exists in Danny's world, yep. which I don't like it when films do that. I think it's really cheap. Um, and I just, what sort of message does that send? Like, I think if you want to make a good teen film, you need to flesh out these characters so they've all got their own little stories. Especially when they have so much emphasis on him being her best friend and him always being there for her, standing up for her. That's the thing. Just to give him such a bad resolution, it was just, yeah. Well, that's where I got confused because they set up Cameron, like there's no reason why Cameron didn't deserve a happy ending either. So that's why I was like, look, she has to end up with Cameron because that's what this film does. And then where does that leave Freddie? How are you going to resolve Freddie? And then I'm watching and go... That's how you're going to resolve Freddy. <laughs> like, I thought, oh, let's be creative. Let's try and do something. But they didn't even bother. And that, that yeah. annoyed me. It probably annoyed me more that they ended it like they did rather than just letting him walk off into the sunset and be strong by yeah. himself. That would you have been better. It's not going to work with Danny. And you know what? Maybe I don't love her. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. That's, that's fine. But, you know, Freddy is probably one of the most or one of the more relatable characters to people watching this film. Yeah. They're like... Got a, got a crush on someone who they've always had a crush on. They're friends with them. They're stuck in that friend zone. <laughs> is it ever going to work? Well, there's your answer. You're just going to end up with some cheerleaders if it, if it works out for you. So, yeah, I didn't like that message at all. I'm glad we brought up Freddy and I'm glad we're on the same page with that. Right. That's probably the one character that I could talk about all day because <laughs> it bothered me. 
The what about the acting performances in this? I I don't think that um any recognizable people would want to be in this film. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why they've probably got such a, a cast that's not recognizable. Yeah, I look, I absolutely agree with that. None of the characters there's nothing there's not enough depth to any of these characters that make you think that okay, as a quality actor, I can come in and I can really make this my own. No. There, there was very little for them to work with. So whilst the acting performances were meh, um, I think they were on the back foot from the very start. And <laughs> they had no chance. No, exactly right. Um, so, yeah. I, I wouldn't say credit where credit's due, but yeah. They, they, they were fine, but I agree. It's, yeah. it's a really tough gig to get. I did want to mention, this is yes. not too much about the characters, but... John Michael Higgins, who plays Principal Dixon. Okay, all right. I've, I had him in my IMDb, so it was uh, one of my IMDb. So go for it. Well, tell, I just tell wanted, me about. All, all I wanted to say was it's his third Netflix original movie. Good. So the th- films are Mascots and Shimmer Lake. Mascots, Shimmer Lake, and now this, and obviously this. Um, but you'd probably know him from Pitch Perfect. That's, yeah, that's where I recognise him most from. So I looked him up because I'm like, I know that I've seen him in something else recently. And when I jumped on first, the first thing that comes up is that uh, he played. The principal in Bad Teacher. Oh, yeah. So you've got him playing the same role, two films. And then I was like, no, that's not it. And I was like, oh, it's this film that I've watched recently. Because MJ recommended it. A film called Status Update. Oh, he's in that too. <laughs> he is. Oh, my goodness. And he plays, eh? He plays teacher. The, yeah. And I was going to say, have you seen the movie Fired Up? It's a comedy film where these two guys go to cheerleader camp because they want to pick up girls. Okay. He is like the... Like one of the teachers who takes cheerleading, like he, he no, he is so typecast, and so he doesn't. So you just, you just whenever you need a teacher, it's like let's. He get doesn't him with pretend the like he's not typecast. I don't, I don't get. I like John Michael Higgins. He's fine, but I just wanted to. I think I want to keep track of who's in the most Netflix original that's films. A, that's a good pickup. Yeah, uh, the, and that's the, right. He's in Status Update. We, we got to talk about that off air because I saw you didn't like that. Yeah, one. Yeah, I, I don't want to bring it up. On, <laughs> on air, but not uh, not one of uh, my favourite film status update, but definitely same crowd. Anyone that's listening to this episode because they like this type of movie, probably get on status update. <laughs> I love status update. I didn't like this movie though. No, but it's same. same I know. Movie. No, you're probably right. I'm not you're saying. Right. Yeah, depending on like. All right, a lot let's... more charm to status update. <laughs> sure. Let's look at some <laughs> scenes. What what stood out for you in this in this film? Okay, uh, I've got a few. There are a few things I didn't mind. Okay. So. Um, the first thing that I did like, and it's a very small thing, is when the father walks in on Danny when she's looking in the mirror. Good. That's one of my scenes too. I did enjoy <laughs> their exchange in the hallway where she goes, father, and he goes, daughter. <laughs> I thought that was very it was good. It was good that It was funny yeah. because, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was, and yeah, that's it was all funny. it was. It was, yeah, it was, like, it was ah, a nice little laugh. Yeah, yeah, well played. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> that's probably how it would well, play she, like, He walks in on her like in the mirror pretending he's, she's Alexa and yeah. she's like, you know, pushing her boobs up. Yeah. And like, so, you know, it was, yeah, that was funny. And he's like, I don't want to deal with yeah. this. And she's like, I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> <No>. so, <yeah. laughs> that was good. That was good. Uh, the other thing is I like were kind of, I said I think this the, the message in this film was quite nice. So there's a few things here where I liked the fight that Danny had with Freddie at the lockers, mainly because I liked what Freddie was saying to her. Um Yes, it's been done before. Yes, there's nothing groundbreaking about it. But I think in a film that was lacking quite a bit of uh, depth, this played a nice little role. That I wasn't a massive fan of that scene because the lead up to that was where she's all dressed up for this scholarship interview. And it's just one of those scenes that we've seen before where it's all slow-mo and the whole, you know, everyone walking past is checking her out. Oh yeah, that's yeah. yeah. It's got nothing to do with that. Nah, and then when they are talking after they finish talking, she does that awkward fall over the locker, and mm-hmm. it's like, oh yeah, I'll come to your party, sort of thing. So the the parts around that conversation really annoyed me a little True. bit. Yeah, for no other reason. If this film had have had a lot more going for it, that film that scene would have just blended in. Yeah, but it stood it stood out a little bit. Yeah. So um, probably my favorite scene of the film was when. Alexa showed that video of Danny being, you know, a stalker. Yep. And they kicked her out and they kicked her out and said, Oi, get out of here. I like that. I like seeing all the peers standing up to Alexa. Yeah. I think that sent a very nice message as well that just because you're the most popular girl in the school in the bloody shouldn't be state. Me. Yeah, exactly right. That was that one sat really, really well with me. I like that. Um, almost as much as I like the dad's speech, as boring and cliche as it was, what he said was really good. Be yourself. Focus on what's important to you. Great message. Kids, all kids should be getting that message. Even adults should be getting that message. You forget it sometimes. Yep. Um, and two small things at the end, which I think because I'd given up on this film, I kind of smiled. 
is when, what was that guy's name who was just like the one in the principal's office all the time who was always in trouble? I've got that down as something that really annoyed me. Yeah, it did annoy me. But his, I think, name's, his name was Broussard. Um, yeah, something like that. But, yeah, um, Broussard. Broussard, yeah. I just liked it at the beach when Danny's walking there and he goes... Looks like you went on a looks like you went on a full hero hero's journey, girl. Nice. <laughs> it was quite meta. I, I like that they were sort of. I think by that end they were almost poking fun at the film, because you're. I know you're not going to like this, but when Principal Dixon was smoking that yeah. bong, that worked for me. Yeah. The yeah. grandma at the party didn't. <laughs> but Principal <laughs> Dixon did. It was almost just like. This film's struggling. Let's just chuck everyone in there and have a bit of fun. <laughs> there was no reason to have <laughs> it. wasn't any at all. And I, if I had a liked the film, maybe I wouldn't have liked that because yeah. I didn't like it. I was like, ah, that'll do. I'm all right with <laughs> Yeah, that. no, I had that as I didn't like that. Um, I didn't think you would. But either. the Broussard thing, so what annoyed me a little bit about that was you know, you've got this kid, Broussard, who's always getting in trouble with the principal for doing stupid stuff. The, I was like, this is so lazy because they have this um, interview set up at the pool for Cam mm. with Chris Broussard, who's like an oh, NBA. Yeah. Yep analyst and it's like well they're like oh well, we've got this guy Chris Prasad on so oh, we'll just name another character we that can't even come didn't up with even character. click with me because as soon as that I was like oh Chris Prasad maybe I didn't even know his name was Prasad, Prasad. In the I, film. I was just like that is so like lazy come up with a different name surely can't yeah. believe they got Chris Prasad <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that I was like oh they have maybe an easy couple of bucks they could have got anybody to do that and it would have had the same impact, impact exactly didn't even need any, <laughs> anyone at all what did you like Jesse so I did like that scene with the dad and the awkwardness at the start. Yeah. And the only other thing that really I thought was funny that made me laugh a little bit was uh, Alexa rocks up at Danny's house to do that sort of, I want you back on board oh, yeah. scene. And the sister opens the door and passes out. <laughs> and then, the, and then um, Danny goes, oh, don't worry. She did the same thing when she met Olaf at Disneyland. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was funny. I, nice little Disney reference. I had a good giggle. I think the sister was supposed to be funnier. The, like, sis- the sister reminded me, and we're doing this out of order, but of, to all the boys I've loved before. Yeah, like, she did. Reminded me so yes. much of the Little Sister and that. Like some sort of tiny little bit of comedic relief yeah. that maybe didn't work. I think it worked better in To All the Boys, boys I've Loved Before. Yeah. But I think that was probably a slightly bigger role too. Yeah. So that's episode 103 if you're listening to us um, Jeez, years memory. in advance. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> out there. We uh, recorded it. Well, let's go through some things that didn't sit very well with us. For a film I didn't like, I need to stress it. There wasn't that many scenes that I specifically didn't like. Good, there I've was, got lots. There, so. was, there, was, there, was a, there was a period during this film where I was, and I'll probably say this a little bit, I was really, really bored. Yep. And there's no way in the world I would have kept watching this film if, you know, we weren't doing it for this purpose. But yep. um, very, 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 one of the very first scenes, I think when they're just doing like the opening credits, um, the bloke who is a mate of Cameron says to the other guy, I told you the bleachers was the best place to work out. And he's just doing free weights in a, de- <laughs> in a denim vest watching people run track. I was like, what? <laughs> what is going on here? It's like someone wrote that line and like, this is hilarious. This is how we're starting the film. <laughs> and I think he even said like Thanksgiving came early after he did it. Like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Um, the cheerleading scene in the uh, in the gym was an absolute bloodbath. Yep. Like for no reason, they just started doing just this sexy no dance. Yeah, and it was and a weird dance too. So that was just rubbish. <laughs> and this is probably, yeah, I guess maybe this is why I didn't have too many because this is probably like a 30-minute scene if you really want to call it like It's more of an act. The whole pretending to be friends thing and so obviously setting her up for embarrassment was way too predictable and so painful to watch because yep. it was really slowly unfolding for me. Yeah. And I was like, girl, like, come on. Even like the, there's that scene where they go in the shop and she's getting them all clothed and then she oh, wanted yeah. shoes. She's like, nah, I'm not oh, paying for your shoes. Shoes aren't included. Yeah. Like, come on, you're a smart girl. Well, what about when they're sitting there when she's a little bit drunk and they're talking at dinner and she's clearly holding her phone up filming yeah. her. Like, come on. Um, and then that just sort of comes down to the other thing I didn't like was, which you spoke about earlier, was how naive her transformation was. Yep. Yeah, didn't believe a second of it. No. Um, so, I mean, when that's the crux of your film and you're getting that wrong, you're in a little bit of trouble. Hmm. All right, what specifically <laughs> have you got there? I've, I've got, got, I've got, I've got a few. I've got a few. These are just little specific scenes. So, cool. the, to start off with, putting the pig in her face to kiss and then continually calling her pig girl, I was like, I feel like we've moved, especially when you've got a film that is hashtag reality high, you're trying to talk to a generation that may have worked in a movie from the 70s, 80s. Mm. And I was like, Maybe not so much now. Like, I can't imagine a bunch of kids doing that. True, but I guess that was trying to... This is what it was like 10 years ago. And well, yeah, but no, I, was, yeah, I, agree. I don't know. I wasn't a massive fan. I forgot about that scene, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then the opening scene where you've got all these actors' names coming across the screen, like in these big, bright letters, 
it was really off putting. It reminded me of like those, that Bravo channel logo, like the, mm-hmm. and that's obviously his background that you've said in television yeah, and producer. producer yeah. And uh, yeah, it was just off putting to start off. I'm like, Oh, I'm not going to like this. <laughs> I'm not going to like You're losing me out. already. Yeah. Uh, the first scene, well, not the first scene, but one of the first scenes with Alexa and she rocks up to school with a cafeteria with this little dog and a little cameraman following her. I have a question about Alexa and that's probably a really good time to bring it up. Yeah. Does she just like come to school when it suits her? And is her like a social media show or is it a real TV show? I don't quite. So I think it's a YouTube show. YouTube yeah, channel. Or like a, with, yeah. a profesh- like with an actual cameraman. Yeah, that follows her around. But like. It's like the Ball family, isn't it? They have their yeah. own YouTube show. But then she just rolls into school and it suits her. Yeah. Okay. As long as that's what it was, because that's what I thought it was. <laughs> but that, that happens at school a lot these days. Kids just rock yeah, up when they want. It's true. So different the, reasons. <laughs> yeah. The, the kid with, um yeah, so she walks in with his dog and then threatens the principal with blackmail <laughs> because right. it's a service dog. And then he's like, I love dogs and disabled people. I'm like, Ugh, it was just cringeworthy. Yeah, it really was, cringeworthy. It was bad. <laughs> that Broussard kid just like gets brought into class late because he's been sniffing whiteboard yes, markers. That's right. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> surely you, you can do something cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, good one. I didn't like the nickname for Danny where they called her Never Been Dick Danny. I just thought that, that it wasn't needed. Like, when was that? Um, when she rocks up, she rocks up at the pool. Oh, the okay, yeah. And they're like, oh, there's <coughs> never been Dick Danny. Oh, okay, like, yeah. Oh, no need for that line. Yeah. Just cut that line out altogether. Just, we know that they're horrible people. You don't need that extra, you know, abuse. Did um, you find it funny that... So this was a day party where they're drinking, right? Yep. Everyone's drinking. How often have you been to a day party where everyone's drinking that ends in the day? Because <laughs> by the end... Cameron and Danny are swimming and it's still daytime and no one's there and no, no it was, one it was night it wasn't that dark it was the lights in the pool were on and because the <sighs> people are upstairs in the house asking for, for, the for dad marijuana, keeps the marijuana. Yeah, yeah. but then I feel like there was a scene where it was just the two of them maybe before it All got that, dark yeah. but no one was no there one's and there. I was like what what's going on isn't yeah. everyone just got dark be drunk, really drunk and sloshy but no and I didn't like that pool party it was like watching this music video clip that never ended like all these you know people jumping in the pool with the bangers music going and there were a lot of these awkward shots of Danny and Cam just staring into each other's eyes cut yeah. throughout and then like when she walks out in that bikini it was just really creepy because the camera it just kept cutting to his eyes like he was amazed <laughs> I was like oh this is weird this is really weird really weird uh, and how, then the, how did they get this in a, in a, such a nice house because the dad seemed like a bit of a drop kick but I think they might have said something about he might own like a car dealership or something but it was a beautiful it was, house it was a nice house beautiful um, and then that pool where Cam's like She's like, oh, I don't know how to swim. Well, because I'm a swimmer, conveniently, I'll teach you how to swim and we can bond over this swimming session. And he goes to her, do you trust me? And she's like, yeah, of course I trust you. So to prove that trust, he takes her to the deep end. I was like, that, that, that is the most, oh, so much trust. So <laughs> you like high school musical, yeah? I do like high like school musical. We both like high school musical. We it's do, a great yes. movie. What about the scene when Troy and Gabriella are both shooting for the first time when he's late for practice and yeah. he comes in and shoots by himself and then she comes in? What was better? That scene of him shooting hoops with Gabriella? Definitely, because I feel exactly. like the, the setup of him being a basketball player was... That's what I mean. There's if, so many things in this film that I feel like they tried to... I, I feel like this character was so badly Troy Bolton, but such a bad <laughs> version of Troy Bolton. Uh I got a couple more, sorry. I no, no, don't be sorry. <laughs> the, there's a scene where Cam um, takes Danny to see these plankton that glow in the dark when he throws rocks oh, yeah. in the water. Is that real? I don't know <laughs> if it was real, but his line to her was, you must be really special um, because, you know, you're the only person I've taken here. And then it's followed by this montage of, like, all these things they do together, like kissing at school and watching TV and eating burgers. I'm like, oh, just <laughs> don't need it. <laughs> really, really don't need it. Hang on, do you not like the montage or you didn't like the plankton scene? Didn't like it either of them. From the plankton start yeah. of it, and then yeah, that was just, it. They just, yeah, lost me again. I, just, I got lost so much in this film. This film needed that. They needed montages, though, because <laughs> they won't tell them the story otherwise. <laughs> oh, man. Um, oh, the Cold War was referred to like USA being Taylor Swift and the USSR being Taylor Lautner. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> How does that make sense? These are lines that I genuinely just missed. <laughs> who, who, like, I don't even remember that. Who thought that that was a good line? And, like, what has Taylor Lautner done that's so bad to be referred to as the USSR? Does he, like, lock people up and kill gypsies and, like... Was this in class? This was in class. What was I doing? I don't know. You probably don't (laughs) know. To be honest. Uh, 
what, another thing that really annoyed me is that towards the end where, you know, Danny's like, she's hovering over the clicker on her computer, whether she's going to disable her accounts. Yeah. I'm like, this is the perfect opportunity to disable your account and be like, okay, social media has done all this damage. Let's get away from it. But instead she does a live video. I have a slightly different take on yeah. that. I think that was a nice opportunity to show how you can use social media and yeah. a better way to use social yeah. media. And yeah. I, uh, I did I was like, like a little bit. suspend it, that's exactly what you did at the start of the film and you know, yeah. where's the growth. So I, I didn't mind that. Yeah, but she was a better person when it was suspended. So I, I don't know. Yeah, True, I, yeah. You know, I agree. But uh, that was a nice way to turn things around. And even everyone's like, yeah, I saw your video. I saw yeah. it. And who was that, um, that rapper guy that she met that donated money? But he was like, I saw your video. Yeah, and I yeah. was like, okay, this is good. Yeah. And she's, yeah. And uh, the last thing that, that, there were those two characters, Holly and Shannon. <clears throat> oh, yeah. There's like absolutely nothing characters. No, and you get, at the end of the film, you've seen him barely. Huge a whole resolution. Film, and then you have this <laughs> lengthy dialogue between the two, and he's like, oh, you know. And she's like, I just want you to know that I'm a virgin because even though everyone thinks that I put out. I, I didn't think that she put out. Me either. No, I was, it's like, that's the first time I've heard this, Holly. You don't need to justify yourself. Like, that could have been an interesting movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was like, who are these two? Aren't they just the two that are standing there the whole time oh, that, like, he yeah. did set it up by being like I want to do up my car to take her out that yeah. was all I knew about yeah. them yeah. I, I'm happy for them to end up together no problem at all but that was seriously like a five minute scene of them just yeah. like I was like this is nice but who are you <laughs> <laughs> good pick up uh, that's, that's me done uh what what was the film trying to say? What are some like? I think you've touched on a few of these already. Well, I think we could, yeah. Not that we have the audio, but we could replay the dad's speech, speech yep. and that is what the film was about. Yeah, simple. Being yourself, focusing on what's important to you. Um, you know, being real rather than fake. Which being I say, and, yourself, and they're yeah. they're really nice themes, and I think this target audience needs to hear that. Yeah, and there's a little bit about insecurities too, like um, people being insecure with who they actually are and yeah. that sort of ties in well with that as well and friendship what does friendship actually mean because to me I don't know through this film like because I think that um, Freddie knew what friendship was and that friendship was abused and broken whereas I don't think Danny knew what friendship really was until she has that flashback where she reads through a diary and says oh Freddie was my there for me yeah. yeah there was actually I just thought about this right now Freddie was a bit of a dick at the start when Cam was making moves on Danny yep. and he kept trying to be, stand in the way but, you know, the guy's in love, so I get yeah. that. So, I don't even know if that was necessarily the greatest friendship. Because you got to also remember, he blasted her because she didn't drive him to something. It's like, well, mate, sort yourself out. I, yeah, yeah, she committed to it. And yeah. So, yeah. Is, is what's a, little... a good friendship in this film? Who is it? Like, Cameron and his two mates? That, that was fine, but I guess <laughs> they didn't really explore it. Uh, maybe towards the end, we said his friendship between the principal and um, <laughs> Brousseau. <laughs> and the Brissau. other thing as well, there's that thing about, you know, holding your responsibilities is an important thing. Like she had this responsibility and this commitment to drive Freddie to this, yeah. his first gig. And they made a deal about that. And then, you know, she had this responsibility to book the function event for this, the vet, the pet rescue place. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Sort of like trying to True. fix those things too. It did annoy me actually, where they showed him calling her prior to her handing her phone in. And then like a little bit later, she hands her phone in and he keeps calling her. But when she handed her phone in, I was like, yeah, that's all well and good, but you're going to use this as an excuse. Where he was calling you before that, what were you doing with your phone? But I just, I think that was just bad editing. I really do, because he was calling her the whole time, and I was like, well, answer it now. So, anyway. All right. What do we take from this film? Um, I have to say, the dog factor increased my like levels. They were cool. good. They we were... haven't had a dog update in a while. True. We haven't. No, sorry. I mean, dogs on the film. So, yeah. my dogs who normally do bark a lot. I think they were sleeping during this film. I was trying to think back because I don't uh, think they bark. I, I wish I'd join them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought some of the dogs in this film were pretty great. Yeah. Um, I love Danny's dog, Tyrion. Mm -hmm. He was just really cute, really loyal. I love the big dog that was like the, the face of the whole thing who needed the Achilles. Yep. Rough shit Achilles for a dog. dog not a pretty good rough. thing. Um, so I kid you not, watching those dogs and seeing that final scene with the dogs, I was like... This film's not too bad. <laughs> it just increased my like levels, so well done. Good. Um, I I generally like movies about high school, despite this not really falling into what I like about high school movies mm -hmm. and movies that need a happy ending and get a happy ending. I like, so I'm giving it. Not that you can give it a tick for being a high school music high school movie, but I think this film is the perfect sleepover movie for twelve to fifteen year old girls. You can see them watching it on a Saturday night and then came back to school and talking about it and saying, oh, this is my camera and this is, I can see that. And there's no reason why they wouldn't enjoy it. Cool. What's your takeaway? 
Uh, my takeaway is that that was very positive. For that me. was that was yeah. That was, I was worried you were going to give your overall summary. Of the no, film, no, no. Because like, oh, my summary, we're, we're gone. <laughs> no, my summary isn't. I like dogs and high school, <laughs> and it's five stars. <laughs> that would fit in perfectly with this film. Uh, what I took from this one was the the whole Freddie loving Danny thing that just got dropped from the plot annoyed me mm-hmm. way too much for me to take a lot of positives out of this film. Absolutely. So that's that's what frustrated me the most. Um, and I don't think this would have been better on anywhere but a streaming platform. Yeah. It, you know, it's the, the, the perfect film that just gets dumped somewhere in some streaming online server somewhere. Although the unfortunate thing is no one seems to be watching it even when it's on there. So, yeah, look, I don't know. You think, like Netflix is in nearly every country in the world except like two or three countries. And you look, what did we say? There was like a hundred and something people that had rated it on um, Rotten Tomatoes, like... This isn't doing much outside of the US and mm. Australia, maybe UK. Like, no one's relating to this. No, and you think about that. The director and the cast have probably got 100 friends between them. So, there's your 100, 100 reviews. That's such a good point. Like, if my if my friend directed a film, yeah. I'd be putting that on anything I could, saying this is five stars, yeah. go watch it. Exactly. It's a really good point. Yeah. That's um, why Rotten Tomatoes is rubbish. No one uses it. No one it. uses it, yeah. Well, to give a bit of context, we'll, we'll continue to talk about it on here. All right. IMDb. Did we try to check out if IMDb, we've used it during the film or not to check out anyone? I said, I don't think I ever watch a film anymore without using IMDb to check on someone. And for this one, it was um, Dr. Fiona, the vet. Ah, oh, good. I, I had the same one. So it- when I was doing it, I'm typing it in and I'm seeing it, it clicked. I was like, there are no reasons why. But yep. I still started looking at it in the first place. And I like the fact that it was such a different character to what she is on 13 Reasons Why, obviously being the mum of Hannah. Hannah. Yep. Um, really different role. Thought she was good. Showed she was a bit versatile. So good luck to her, and hopefully she I see her in a bit more. Yep, I had exactly the same. And then I was like, thirteen reasons why, Mum. I'm first season. I thought was good. Thought it was an original idea. Second season sort of uh, struggled a bit. Wow, I'm on the exact same page. Just started the third one and I watched half the episode and. I'm not going to continue. I'm done. Okay, done yeah. Well, that was my issue with the second season. It's yeah. like, you're just making this because it was popular. Yeah, exactly. Stick with what you did. All right, do you have any questions that you want to ask? <clears throat> Actually, I think I asked the ones that I did want to ask about why the pretty and smart girl got really bullied and why Alexa just comes to school when she pleases. So I want you to ask me a question because right. I hope you have Well, I've, I've used a couple of things from the film and considering that you've oh, missed I a love few it of the when dialogue. You yeah. I, oh. <laughs> so, all right. I'm all in. Lindsay Lohan or Hilary Duff? There's a, this is, it's not, it shouldn't be that tough, I hope, I'd hope. Lindsay Lohan is completely off the rails. <laughs> Hilary Duff, has she gone off the rails? No, she's Hilary Duff is awesome. She's a mum and yeah, she's, she's yeah. doing really well. So yeah. I'm, I'm definitely with Hilary Duff. Hilary Duff, yeah. Cool, good. I don't heard her do much for a while, but I think it's because she's focusing on motherhood. Yeah. Good on her. No, Hilary Duff, easy. Was I supposed to know who Kid, who Kid Ink is? Did is, you know who Kid, Kid Ink is? Uh, is that the guy who had the big dog yeah, at the, the club? Yeah, he had the big party at the Capitol Records and... Yeah, no, yeah. no idea who he okay, was. Okay, good, me either. I no is idea. he real? I think, yeah, he's a... Because like, okay. on the credits, it was Kid Ink as himself. Okay. So he's a real guy. So. As I said, not aimed at us, this film. Not at all. Um, What about the other guy that Alexa dated, who's like a famous YouTube guy? I think that's a real guy. For so... Or for, she couldn't even pronounce his name, so I can't pronounce it either. So you didn't know him? No. No, neither did I. But I was reading some reviews on it and like oh, literally 50% of the reviews are like, I can't believe for so or whatever oh. his name is in it. Oh. So they're all talking about him. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. So this is, this is a review that I found. Uh, the author is Sabrina Broderick. I'm just going to read quickly what she said. She goes, hashtag reality high has to be the worst movie I've ever seen. The runtime was less than two hours, but it took me four hours to get through because I had to keep stopping the film, unable to watch for more than 20 minutes oh, at a time. So she would just stop it and then, <laughs> you know what? This deserves another go. I'm going to go back to it. Four hours to watch a 90 minute film. That's that's incredible. <laughs> I, just, I just thought that was that was a good one to share. I, I saw a review. I don't know where I saw it. I was obviously doing some research. It was like a two line review that was just like, I am 10 years old and I love this movie. Like saying like that. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. Context. That's who likes it. Last one. So at the end of the film, when um, Cam and um, Danny are, are back on good terms, you know, he makes this big deal about, you know, I finally told my dad that I'm going to go to college. Didn't Danny already reveal when she was drunk off her face at the pool and the dad's standing there and he's like, you're going to college. And then the camera cut to dad and he's like, what? What are you doing? Yeah. Wow, okay. But I guess it means he had the conversation with him rather than just 
I'm sure Dad had the conversation with him when he got home that night. So I don't know if you should be that. You proud know what? I I am embarrassed. I was writing some notes for this film. I couldn't remember what Cam wanted to do at college. Swimming. No. Oh, it was to do with the plankton. It was science and animals and stuff. Oh, marine yeah, biology. Minor, yeah, that's, that's right. So that's it. Science I was like, and animals, marine biology. I want to put this water. in my notes because I was doing the whole Troy Bolton comparison that the basketballer, but he wants to be an actor or yep. whatever. He wants to get into musicals. And I was like, okay. And then you got Cam, who is the swimmer, who wants to... Oh, bloody hell. What did he want? I couldn't even remember. Um, thank you for reminding me. No, nah, no worries at all. And... Um, very excited in about a week's time. I think High School Musical, uh, the TV show, will be on Disney Plus. Are you excited, or I'm 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 filled with trepidation. Who cares? I'm just gonna watch it. Yeah. It doesn't it, I don't care if it's crap. I'm still gonna watch it. Yeah. Okay. I don't want it to be crap because you know what? High School Musical, awesome. High School Musical two, mm, didn't mind it. High School Musical three, really good. High, I think the company we saw High School Musical three in gold class. We did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Simpler times <laughs> on opening morning. <laughs> 10, 10 30 a.m. We had beers while watching High School say, Musical 3. <laughs> we booked that weeks in advance. No, High School Musical uh, it really yeah. clicked with me. It's good. That was the only one that hit the cinema, High School Musical 3. It was, yeah. yeah. The first two were just yeah, Disney, Disney movies. movies. All right. Well, I think we're ready to wrap this up. Give us, um, we like to give a rating out of five for our film. So, MJ, what, what are your thoughts? All right. So, hashtag reality high. This really wasn't a film that was made for me. So despite me giving it a tick for a nice, albeit rammed down your throat message and warranted but predictable happy ending, I really battled through. Um, Overacting, childish banter, hollow characters made it a bit of a snore fest. Probably would have been a hoot for 12 to 15 year old (laughs) girls. So I can give you credit for that. That's one and a half stars for me. Awesome. So I'm on the same lines as you. And... This film, to me, it could have been about the dangers of social media. Like, you've got hashtag in the title. Mm, you've got reality. So, what's the difference between being real and false and fake? Yeah. And highs in the high school. And then they tried a little bit to, like, towards the end that to say that, you know, social media can have positives and can be used for good. Like, with the GoFundMe and yeah. that sort of stuff. But the message wasn't there throughout. And I feel like if you have a title like this, you've got to try and play that theme throughout the whole movie. Maybe we should make a film with what you've just summed up there, and I reckon you'd be right smack mm. bang in the rain, behind the reins of making this kind of film. Mm. So I'll help you. Yeah. That sounds good. We, All right, let's make pitch it. Pitch the film. idea. Yep. Netflix, are you listening? <laughs> um, <laughs> this film had, no, had a nothing story for me, yeah. and it didn't need to be told, so I am also giving it one and a half out of five. And you know what? We have freely given half stars and one stars. And uh, zero stars. And zero. Yeah, Jesse gave a zero, <laughs> didn't he? I can, there, were some things, there were some redeeming things about yeah. this, and I think some young girls might enjoy it, so it's not, it's not terrible. I mean... Yeah. But it didn't work for us. So it didn't even need the calculator for that one. We are giving it a 1.5 out of 5 as a team. Uh, we have social media. We do. We do. We pop Hashtag. a post up. <laughs> Hashtag uh, <laughs> Flicks Forum. <laughs> at Flicks Forum. At uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We pop a question up every now and then. And um, this question's inspired by the film. It's inspired by Danny just sitting there ignoring Cam when he's trying to tell her all these awesome things about his life. Oh, so yeah, That annoyed me. Yeah. That is it rude. possible to actively listen while on your phone? Or is it just completely rude? That's a really good question because let's be honest, we're all at fault at times. Yeah, like exactly. I, yeah, I'm not perfect at that. I mean, if there's a game of footy going on, I'm checking the scores. Yeah. My wife's saying something like it's hard to be engaged in both. So yeah, so <sighs> great question. Good. All right, so that'll be on social media. We are on all good podcasting platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify. So if you can get on there, we're on everything now. Yeah, we? we are. We're yeah. On everything. Google searches, we're, we're yeah, there. We're everywhere. If you can give us a high rating, that would be very nice. That would be really nice. We're back again next week. We are. This one, what I'm going to try week? not to butcher um, the, the cast because... What's it called? This is a Cambodian-American biographical historical thriller. So probably a bit similar to Hashtag Reality High. Yeah. <laughs> we are going this on is, a real this different... This is massively different. So right, this is a 2017 film called First They Killed My Father. Oh, goodness. It's uh, directed by Angelina Jolie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It stars Shremok Sarim. Kompik Puong, Sochita Sveng, Dara Heng, Kim Hak, and Kim Hak Moon. So, yeah, nice take the time, give it a watch. Yeah, um, right. It's a bit of a long one, I think, <clears throat> one from what I'm saying, but I'm looking forward to doing that one. Might sounds be a, good. a little yeah. bit of a switch up. I from, think it um, sounds a little bit different. Hashtag really high. That's the beauty of what we're doing right now on yeah. Netflix. They are keeping it very broad. So, thanks for coming along, having a nice chat. It's been good as usual. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be back next week. We'll see you then. Bye.